Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today I have a favorites video and I have not done one of these in a long time. I've been doing a lot of shopping and using a lot of makeup, but I had some instant favorites and then some stuff that I've just kind of been putting to the side to show you guys and it's time. So before we get into the video, if you're new, I would love to have you join the family. So please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you know every time I upload. I do hauls, I do a lot of beauty content, nails, hair, makeup, all of it, and some fitness sprinkled in. So I won't keep you waiting any longer. If you wanna see my favorites that I've been loving for the past couple months, stay tuned and keep on watching. All right, so first off, can we get into this hair? I was really nervous about this color, but this wig is so beautiful. This is actually a wig that I got off of Amazon. It is from the brand Beauty Forever, and this color is perfect. I literally feel like blonde bombshell black Barbie, if that makes any sense. It is so cute and it's completely different from anything that I have. So I will have a link in the description box for you guys to check it out if you're interested. But if you've ever wanted to try a lighter hair color and you're kind of scared of like that 613 blonde, but you still want to get a little something something this has highlights. So it's not too dramatic and I think it'll be a perfect start. The next product I want to mention is kind of a one off. It's a candle. This is one of my favorite candles. It is perfect for this time of year, fall, winter, more winter, but I use it year round. This is sweater weather. This is not new by any means. If you shop at Bath and Body Works, you know what this is. I have this in the lotion as well. I have a bunch of wallflowers. This is one of my favorite scents to have in my house. It smells like winter. It kind of has that pine, uh, no eucalyptus, but like it smells like if you smell any of the other ones that are more geared for winter, there's a candle called winter, then you know what this is like. So one of my favorites, it's probably going to sell out because I know candle day is coming up soon. So go check it out. You can get it on sale. The next products that I have, they're actually three different, three products from one brand. I have worked with this brand before. I have shown you guys their stuff before and I have an update of some new stuff. So this is from the brand Lux SB. They are a subscription fragrance service. So you can get any of their fragrances online. Basically it's like any other subscription service. Once a month you get a package, you get to decide from over 700 fragrances. They have niche and designer brands. You get to pick what you want and each month you will get a little box like this. This is what it comes in. And then if it's your first time ordering, you will get a case like this. And then the fragrance that you choose, you just twist it up like that and you pull it out and this is the fragrance inside. You get to choose which one you want. I chose two this time and then they sent me one that I hadn't picked out. So this first one, this is Prada Candy Night. This is actually sitting in my cart at Ulta right now. I don't have anything on. Oh, I want to smell it. This is sweet. I love warm florals. We talk about that all the time. Some of my favorites are my Burberry Blush. Can't right now. They're all sitting right here. So Sunkissed Hibiscus is back there. That's one of my favorites. Um, Joe Malone, Scarlet Poppy is one of my favorites. So I'm into florals, but I don't like rose florals, if that gives you any idea. But this is Prada Candy Night, and I will tell you guys the notes on it. I'm so glad that this one was sent to me because I was already going to buy it, and now I get to know for sure that this is something that I'm going to love. So the retail for this for a 2.7 ounce bottle is $126. It is a floral and the key notes are orange, bitter, iris, and tonka bean. I absolutely love how this smells. It does say it has a little bit of patchouli. I like a little patchouli, not too much. Musk and the tonka bean. So yeah, anything with a musk, 
but not too heavy. That's right up my alley. The next one that they sent, this is also a different color case. This is Jimmy Choo Fever. This was a recommendation from a friend of mine. So it's kind of in my favorites because I love fragrance in general, but also because I get to pick out what I want, but I'm not spending the full price to get it and then I don't like it. I will blind buy a fragrance. I will read the notes and if it sounds like something I think I'm gonna love, I go ahead and buy it. I've been burned, I'm not gonna lie, a couple of times, but for the most part, I've been pretty successful with it. So this one, the 1.3 ounce bottle is $65 at Ulta. This one is Floral Gourmand. It says the top notes are black plum nectar, middle is heliotrope, and then the base is roasted tonka bean. So again, I think I'm gonna spray this one. Ooh, it's sweet too, but it's different. Okay, Ash, that's my friend who recommended it to me. You might be on to something. I feel like it has a little bit of a powdery smell to it. Just a tiny bit, but it is sweet. Interesting. It says it's an addictive, sensual fragrance. I'll give it that. This would definitely be something I would wear on a date night. The last one, did I pick this one or was this? No, so th no, I did not pick this one. This is one that they picked out for me. You can pick your own or you can list what you like and the type of scents that you like and then they can send you stuff. So if it's a niche you've never heard of, a niche brand that you've never heard of, it'll help you branch out and try something different. This is Made in Pagal, Marie in La Marais. We're gonna have to see what this is because I have not heard of this one and I want to give you guys all the tea. So this one says the main accords are aromatic, then it lists fruity, musky, white floral. Okay, let's see. Top notes are cassis and grapefruit. Middle notes are white flowers and rose. And then the base notes are white musk, iris, and patchouli. Now this Jimmy Choo Fever, this is strong. And I do not know if I'm gonna be able to smell this. Let me spray it on something and see. I'm gonna spray it on this towel because, let's see. Mm, I don't know about this one. I'd have to spray it on me. I do smell the grapefruit. It's definitely more citrus than the others, but there's something under it, I'm not sure, and it might be because of the rose. All right, if I had to rank them, I think Prada Candy Night, Jimmy Choo Fever, then this one, Marie, <laughs> this name, Marie in La Marais, Made in Pagal would be the third. So if you're interested in checking out Lux SB, they do have a subscription service, like I said, and you do get the most product in a vial than any other prescription service. They do 0.3 ounces, so that's nine mils. I think it's an absolutely great service and it is $15.95 a month. You can get a discount on your first month for new subscribers only. So you can get 35% off of your first month, which brings it to under $11. If you're interested in checking it out, everything will be linked in the description bar. If you wanna try some new fragrances, this is the perfect way to do it. I have a few more non-makeup related products and then we'll jump into those. The first one, you guys know I've been having fun, switching up my hair, giving my hair a break and trying out different wigs. I decided to pick up this ORS Olive Oil Fix It Liquifix Spritz Gel. This is the first time I ever installed a wig and didn't have crusties, didn't have all kind of stuff caked up in my hairline that I could not get out. This is absolutely amazing. It's like a cross between a got to be hairspray or like whatever your favorite spray is and a gel. So like the got to be gel, that's the one I think of because that's what I use the most. I know ORS has one too, but I used to use the actual gel and then go over that with a spray 
and it just always seemed like the hairline was hard and it was shiny and just it was bad this stuff sprays out like this hairspray but a little thicker and then it gets tacky really really quick and i don't know i am so glad i found this and this will probably be the only thing that i use to lay my wigs down and then to melt it i go back over with either the ors spray or the got to be spray but this right here is a game changer if you try wigs and you've had issues with them sticking with them laying down with them having a residue this says on it stronghold edge protector because it does have castor oil in it and then it dries clear so there's no residue go pick this up please do yourself a favor and get it the next thing i have is this ever pro gray away this is a temporary root concealer I don't know what is up, if it's stress, if it's age, <laughs> I don't know what, but just right here, like in my parting space, for some reason, I get grays. I've started dyeing my hair pretty much black. I think it looks healthier, it's shinier, and I like it better than when it's light, plus it's easier to blend with my headband wigs, but it absolutely frustrates me when those little gray hairs are peeking through. Or if you have issues with your hair being thinner in the front and you just want to fill it in a little bit, some people use topics, but that's a fiber that has, to, you have to have hair there to connect to it for it to connect on. This is just an actual spray. So I spray this right in the front over my grays or if my hair, like I just put a relaxer and my hair is looking a little too thin for my liking in the front, I use this and it's amazing. This next hair product, y'all. I use this on my real hair. I am not using this on a wig. It is kind of expensive. This is from Dry Bar. This is their Liquid Glass Miracle Smoothing Sealant. This says it lasts through three washes. I have washed my hair. I blow dry it. And then when I'm blow drying, I'm like, man, my hair doesn't feel that soft. It doesn't look that shiny. You spray this on while it's still damp. And it's like it puts a sealant over your hair and just makes it shiny without weighing it down. I don't know what kind of magic is in here. It says it's a heat activated technology that wraps an invisible shield around each strand of hair to provide frizz resistance and it leaves a super glossy silky finish without weighing your hair down. The fact that it lasts through three washes, it says that, I don't know if it's true or not, but I absolutely love this and this is going to stay in my hair cabinet. I meant to mention this when I was talking about fragrances. I got everything stacked up in my box right here. So sorry if it's a little out of order. I have two fragrances that I have in my collection already that are my favorites for this time of year. Now, don't get me wrong. I wear them all the time. I'm not one of those people that, oh, you can only wear this at this time and you got to wear this. I wear what I want, when I want, how I want. Whatever I like, that is what I want to wear. I don't care what society and trends say. So... One of my new favorites. This has become my special occasion perfume. This is the Tom Ford White Suede. I already have a backup and I have the body spray. Anytime I can find any version of this, I'm going to pick it up. But only when I get it at the company, the cosmetics company store. This is so expensive. Like this was $300. More than that, I think. I'll put it somewhere on the screen. But who's paying for that regular price? No. 50% off plus the extra 10% extra off during like holidays and stuff. Yeah, we could do that. And that's still a lot. I spray this very sparingly. It lasts long. It's strong, but it stays. So you don't need a lot of it. By far, between this and my Burberry blush, I don't know. I just feel like this feels so, this smells so sexy. Makes me feel like so sophisticated and like I walk in you know people are like oh you smell good yeah girl I know that is what I feel whenever I wear that fragrance another fragrance that I absolutely love right now is the Versace Dylan turquoise now I have other Versace perfumes that I do love as well I bought the Dylan blue and I don't know like when I first smelled it I liked it and then as I kept wearing it I was like uh it's all right but it's not one of my favorites they came out with this. This, I think, smells, it smells clean. And it almost kind of has that, 
aquatic kind of like marine. Let me read the notes because I don't want to sit here and tell y'all the wrong thing. I'm just telling y'all what it smells like in my nose. So this one is a floral and it says the scent type is floral woody musk. Oh, I had that wrong, wrong. It says Mandarin essence. Okay, maybe I'm smelling that then. Lemon, primo fiore essence and pink pepper. So, okay, it's more of a citrus. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. And then it says black currant, bud, absolute, jasmine, petals, freesia, and guava are the middle notes. And then the base are clear wood, vibrant woods, and musks. Yeah, I guess that is kind of citrusy. I wouldn't have picked that up at first. Maybe my nose is a little off because of this Jimmy Choo, which still smells good. But this is one of my favorites as well. All right, I have one more non-beauty item. And I did a full video on this product before and I told you guys when I did the video, I absolutely loved it and I wanted more. This is the Madam Glam Gel Nails. I decided to use this to do my nails for my meat and my polish lasted for the whole week. It lasted through the meat, through the chalk, pulling up my knee sleeves, scratching against my socks, washing my hair, all of it. I have never gotten a full week's wear out of polish that I have done myself at home. No matter how many coats, no matter no chip top coat, all that stuff, it has just never worked. But using this system was super fast. Go check out the video if you haven't seen it. And the nails that I did in that video lasted me from my meat. I decided to pick up more colors. And I was grateful that they said, you know, we love the video that you did. So we're going to go ahead and let you pick some out. So we'll send them to you. The first one I picked out is a kind of gray. It's called French Valley. I'll put the color here for you. I picked this one up because I do. I mean, look at my nails right now. This is like a kind of gray brown. Very, it's a nude, but it's a dark nude. And this kind of is like a lighter version it's almost like a cross between the colors that I have on my nails right now. Yeah, these are press ones, but these colors, I cannot wait till my nails grow out a little more so I can polish them again. Or I'm tempted to put on clear acrylics and do it because I haven't done that in a while. I also picked up their gel polish remover. Last time I ended up just pulling it off and I know that's bad for your nails. So because I want to start using this more regularly, I wanted to get the remover to do it the right way. I also picked up a blue. I've been in love with blues lately. This is their shade Perfect Blue. So that is what it looks like there. And this one is just, it's almost like a periwinkle blue. It's not a royal blue. I'm trying to make sure if I can show it to you guys without making a mess. This is what the shade looks like here. I think it's so pretty. It's like the perfect bright blue, but not like, it's not a royal blue by any means. Definitely leaning more towards like a periwinkle kind of blue, if that makes any sense, but super pretty. Then I picked up Alaska Loving, which is a white. The other white that I picked up was more um, like a super light lilac with shimmer. This one is just a straight up white. I know that is the rave right now where everybody's wearing white nails. And at first I was just like, I can't even find a white that is gonna be white enough to go on and not be streaky or anything like that. So definitely picked one that they said was opaque and you only needed one or two coats. I picked up another glitter. This one's kind of like a duochrome. This is the shade Sticky Toffee. And you probably won't be able to see it if I show it to you, but I will put it up here on the screen. But it's like a bronze and then it has a bunch of different reflect colors in it. I don't think you can see that well here, but I just thought based on what I saw and how I love that their website shows how the nail polishes look on different skin tones. That's how I was able to pick it. This next one is Sky's the Limit. It is a light blue almost like a bluish silver, but it's an iridescent blue. So I'm thinking it'll look good maybe on top of a white, but so that is what it looks like there. It is not as opaque as the other shades are. And then this last one is actually like a burgundy brown. It's called Spooky. 
I'm just so excited. Yeah, this is a gorgeous color. This is like a perfect winter. If you don't want to do like a black, it's like a maroon slash brown. It is so pretty. That's the shade there. Beautiful nude shade. So that is it for the colors that I picked up. I mainly fell in love with these because my nails are very soft. They bend. They're not chipping as much because I am taking biotin and collagen and all that stuff to try to help, but they still bend. And so it makes them very easy to chip and to break. And this also helps to strengthen. Like it actually kind of forms like a shell, I guess, on top of my nails. It's not just regular polish. Like it actually dries and gets hard. So it helps protect my nails as well. Thank you, Madam Glam, for sending these out to me. I'm super excited to have more colors. I lied, one more product. I think I've talked about this before in a favorites. It's still in my favorites. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Pink Dream Body Cream. This works really well. It smells amazing, it is super light. But at one point during the summer, I started feeling like I had little like, I don't know if it was the KP bumps or whatever, but just I felt like a kind of roughness on the back of my arms, which I had never had before. And I started using this every night and it went away. I don't know if it went away because something happened with me or if it was because of this, but I definitely feel like this helped because it helps to make your skin softer and because it also has... I want to say AHAs and BHAs in it, but let me not lie to y'all. Yes, I was right. It does have AHAs in it, so that does help to smooth your skin. All right, now we can get into the makeup. First, we're going to talk about what I have on my eyes right now. I don't know if you guys can see, but this palette, I held out on getting this palette forever. And then as soon as I was able to get it on sale, I picked it up. This is the BH Cosmetics Avocado Toast Palette. Y'all know I love greens. Everybody knows that. This has, these greens at the bottom were really what drew me in. And this Holy Moly shade is actually like a dark green, gray, almost black. So this palette is perfect if you want to do a neutral look. I did a look with just this yellow on my lid to kind of do like a natural look, but still have a little bit of color. I've also used this shade up here. I've used this shade here. I haven't, you know, really used these too much, but that is coming up next. But these colors applied so well. They blended easily. BH Cosmetics has some amazing eyeshadows. You can get them at Ulta. You can also get them on their website. And their website usually has a lot of sales. So if you like greens, pick this up. We'll go ahead and stick with eyeshadow palettes while I'm talking about them. This is another palette that I picked up really late and I eyeballed it forever and then FOMO got me and I wanted to know what the hype was. This is the Artist Couture Supreme Nudes eyeshadow palette. This is the perfect everyday, you love nudes. It is warm toned, but it's not warm like oranges and reds. It's browns, but it's warms. Beautiful neutral shades. This dark green, of course you know, this is a super dark brown. There is no black, but this is dark enough to do the job. And then this shade is actually a lot darker on the eye than it looks in the pan. So I actually have to use this shade here for my crease and then maybe a little bit of this one. And then if I wanna make it really glam or darker or smoky, I'll put this shade here. Any of these shades work really well on the lid if you wanna do a matte or if you wanna do one of these shimmers, they are so beautiful. This palette is worth the hype. The last eyeshadow palette I have, y'all know I had to include this. I got this a while back. I did a look with it. Blew me away when I used it. It had to be in my favorites. This is the Pat McGrath Utopian Dream Palette. Of course, I saved the packaging. I've saved the packaging on all of my Pat McGrath palettes. This is what it looks like. I know you guys have seen it. The black packaging and these shades. It does look similar to Divine Rose 2, but it is different enough that I felt like I needed to pick it up. I didn't pick up Divine Rose 1 because I thought that was too light for my skin tone, but I had to have this one because of the duochromes. Y'all know how I am about shades like that. 
See if I can get it that one right there. I mean, you can see how it's changing. Anything like that, I need to have it. It is what it is. Never get tired of them. This one here, same thing. Absolutely love it. So I don't think there's ever going to be a time where if I pick up something Pat McGrath, it's not going to be in my favorites. I have two mascaras that I want to talk about. One is drugstore, one is high-end. The first one is this Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara. I know this came out a while back and I know everybody was talking about it and I was just like, whatever, it can't be that good. It is that good. This stays on my vanity. One of the first ones that I go to, if I just want to make my lashes look long and I want them to look dark and thick, this is amazing. It does have that kind of bristle tip, the applicator. So if you don't like those, then I don't think you're going to like this one, but I definitely feel like you need to try this formula before you judge it by that because it goes on very black. It's a little wet to start off with. I think I like it more when it dries out, but even still, this is amazing. The next one, I have a backup. I have a small one. I have a big one. This is the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. This is a drier formula. It does have a standard brush tip, but this mascara is so good. It's small enough that I can get my lower lashes really well. I use this today as a matter of fact. And then on my top lashes, it just coats them and makes them look so thick and it lengthens them. I need a mascara that's gonna do it all. I can't just do lengthening. I can't just do volume. I need both. While we're talking about lashes, these Glamnetic lashes, I think I'm late to the game on these two. This liner is insane. I wore these lashes, and normally when I wear magnetic lashes, like I feel like they don't stick that well. Treasure Box Luxe Lashes, I ordered those online. The liner on there is really good. That one sticks as well. This, I literally was like, ow, 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 when I was trying to pull them off. I should have washed them off, but I don't know. I just felt like all my other ones were really easy to pull off, so I thought this was gonna be too. No, boo. These lashes are dramatic. They are absolutely beautiful. They are long, but they're kind of wispy, which I can do long and wispy and I thought they were perfect. So to have something this style, they have a lot more anchors too. That's what I wanted to ship, make sure I share with you guys. These have three, four, five, six anchors on them. I think the other ones I've used before maybe have four or five. And so I always felt like it wasn't enough. I think four. I think I'm gonna end up picking up more styles. They are a little pricey, but definitely worth it. Next up, I have this Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. This reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury, what is it called? I'm looking at it back here. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The Charlotte Tilbury that you put under your makeup flawless filter. This is pretty much a dupe. The formula is a little thinner. I did do a comparison of them. Did I post a video on that? I know I wanted to. I don't know if I did or not. I'm gonna have to look back. If I didn't, then I will because I have a few products that I've found like this. But this one, I love the applicator. It is that sponge tip applicator like the concealer has. And I just put this on my face in the areas that I want to have a little more highlight. And then I put my makeup on top of it. I got the shade O2 Medium. The next shade was a little darker and I figured I was just using this for highlight anyway. I would not use this for makeup. I don't want anything that shiny on my face. If you do, do you boo, but that is not for me. I wear this under my makeup, especially matte foundations to help give me more of a glow. I also wanted to talk about this. This is the Lawless Forget the Filler. A matter of fact, let me put some of this on right now. This is the Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss. I love putting this on before I do my makeup, but definitely after if I'm using anything that's super matte. This feels so good and look, I do feel like, see now my lips look better already. I do feel like it does kind of help them look a little plumper, but it doesn't have that horrible tingly feeling. I do feel a little bit of a tingle, but I like to put this on before I do my makeup and I just feel like it helps to smooth my lips out and to make everything be plump and moisturized before I put on 
any kind of lip product, especially if I'm using something more matte. I've heard a lot of good things about this. When it first came out, I think there was only one shade and then they came out with more shades. I have the shade Velvet. I'm trying to remember if I picked up another one. This might be the only one I have, but I'm tempted to pick up more. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like that's just me being a hoarder because I also have the Maybelline Lifter Glosses, which I love, but they don't give this same kind of tingle. It gives the shine, but not this tingle lip filler plumper look. So Sephora sale is coming up. If you want to try these, go pick it up. Talking about matte lip products, this is what I have on my lips today. This is a Too Faced Melted Matte liquefied matte lipstick this is in the shade bittersweet this is like the perfect red brown you want something kind of vampy but you still want it to be wearable dark just this shade is so gorgeous i swatched it in the cosmetics company store and i was like i need to have this i don't think i had any shades like this or if i do they're old but I love this formula, even though it is really matte, it is very long wearing, and this shade I thought was perfect for the fall and winter. A lip liner that I fell in love with and actually bought two when I first bought it over the summer is the Milani Understatement Lip Liner in Rich Cocoa. I'm gonna show it next to, cause it actually can go with this lipstick. If you like a brown liner, I love a brown liner regardless of what color I'm wearing, because I feel like it helps to define my lips well, it stays, and then anything that's too light, it can help make it blend better. But also if it's dark, I prefer to have even still, unless it's like a super dark color, I want a dark liner and then a lipstick. So these two actually work well together and it'll just give like a little bit of an ombre effect, which is what I'm usually going for. Next up, I have a concealer. I also picked this up from the cosmetics company store. I think, I feel like I looked in my drawer and I don't remember if I have one of these or not, but I know I've seen them at Marshalls or TJ Maxx. This is the Becca Ultimate Coverage Longwear Concealer. This is thick. When I swatched it, I was like, oh my goodness. I did pick up a shade that is almost my skin tone. And... I picked this one up because I wanted something with a little more coverage to wear under my eyes on days when I want to do like a no makeup makeup look. That's the shade right there. I put a very little bit of this under my eyes in this area and then I pat it out with a beauty blender or I'll use a brush, whichever. But I set it because it is thick. I don't feel like this dries down at all, but the coverage is amazing and once you set it, it doesn't move. So this has become my top drawer, need to not look so tired, staple product. We got two more products left and then I have two products that are going in the, eh, they might go in the trash. Let's finish the favorites. This is the Alomar Hydrating Complexion Trio. You guys have seen this in a video. I absolutely love this and I fell in love with it because when I was trying it, this shade right here, it's not quite coming off. I'm trying to make sure. If I put it straight like this, it looks super bright yellow, but it is not. It's more, there's the shade. It's more of like a peach. And at first when I saw it, I was like, that is not gonna do anything for me. That is too dark. But that shade brightens under my eye so well. This shade right here is super dark to contour. And then this is gorgeous as a bronzer. That's what the shades look like right there. So they both can work well on my skin tone. And then that is the brightening shade there. I hate that it's looking like it's almost like a fluorescent yellow because it is not, but that's the shades there. That color right there, beautiful brightening shade for darker skin tones. And this palette is in the shade Dark Rich. One more favorite for you guys. This is a skincare product and I had to include this because I've been wearing this every day. This is the Clinique Pep Start Hydro Blur Moisturizer. This reminds me of the Juno & Co Moisturizer, the Moonshine. It's like a moisturizer and a primer, same thing. I put this on, I feel like it helps to blur this area here and my forehead a little bit. I am wearing it today. I love wearing it under makeup. I also love wearing it by itself because again, it helps smooth. 
I feel like it helps everything look a little more even, but there's no coverage to it. So I can put this on and then just put a little bit of powder or maybe a little tiny bit of like whatever foundation is left on my brush in my problem areas. And I feel like I'm good to go. So this product is also in my top drawer. This is called Stash or Trash Favorites for a Reason. I have one product that for sure is going in the trash and another one, if it wasn't two products in one, would be going in the trash. First trash is this Signature Brow Pencil from, I think this is Kat Von D before they switched to KVD Vegan Beauty. I'm not sure. I don't know if they have these now, if it's the same formula, but this is a brow pencil. I got mine in the shade Dark Brown. I have to press so hard to get this to show like most of the time you get a brow pencil, you can kind of just, you know, do that and you'll see something. Yeah, this is too hard. It is too hard. I can't deal. Like I just broke it trying to make it show. And even with breaking it and like this is the new part of the pencil, it is not coming off. This pencil is absolutely horrible. I don't know if this is just old and dried out. If you guys have tried it and you like it, let me know because maybe it's just mine, but this does not work and it's going in the trash. The last product is this Tardist brown liner. This is the double take liner. There's a pencil on one end and a liquid on the other. I've been talking about brown liner. You guys know how I struggled with finding one. The liquid is good. I'm trying to make sure I don't draw on anything else. This is what the liquid looks like right here. It is dark. It is a dark brown. Absolutely love it. I tried to use this the other day and I wanted to use the pencil on my bottom lash line and I felt like I was gonna scratch all my lashes out. I don't know why, same thing as the brow pencil, it just does not want to work. And I mean, it's out, like you can see the tip of it there, but there is nothing happening. I broke it, I hadn't even used this yet and I think I just picked this up. I'm gonna break it again to see if I can get it to do something. Yeah, this does not work. If the brown liquid liner wasn't so good, this would go in the trash. I swatched this and I never used it. And then I went to use it and it didn't work. So that sucks, but the liquid liner is good. All right, guys, that is it. I feel like this video was a little long, but it's been a while since I gave you an update on products I've been loving. So I guess that's what needed to happen. If you're still here, thanks for sticking with me to the end. If you're new and you enjoy the video, Please go ahead and join the family. Give this video a thumbs up if you love favorites and I will see you in my next video. Bye.